She has said some truly outrageous things. Watch. They already are talking about that we are terrorists. I am terrorists. They told that I was doing some terroristic, you know, what did they tell? The ter like some kind of operation I was uh, kind of prepared, preparing here or I already did something. I don't know. People are telling different, uh, different um, you know, information I get. They already want me, him, and all of us to look as a terrorist. So, yes, I like, would prefer not to live in America now. Like, why did I even go there? I don't know. <laughs> why? I don't know. I thought America is going to like protect us, our kids. It's going to be safe. For, like, any reason. Yeah, it'd be but safe. It you could come over, you could be, you know, part of, let's say, a marathon, and you wouldn't be blown up. Yeah, I don't know why you came here. I ain't going to miss you. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Here's the amazing thing here is, if you don't like America, if you don't trust America, she rings true to you. She rings true to you. This is important. She also told the Associated Press, I'm sick and tired of all this nonsense, what they make up about me and my children. People know me as a regular person. Yeah, they did Lee Harvey Oswald, too. I've never been mixed up in any criminal intentions, especially anything linked to terrorism. Never been mixed up in crime? Really? That is quite a bold statement, considering we have the mugshot. She shoplifted $1,600 in merchandise from Lord & Taylor. Ironically, Lord & Taylor is the store that also had the videotape of her sons planting the bombs. So... Also, we have now the taped phone conversations that she had with her sons about jihad and another person on the watch list. So it's quite a statement to make. But again, if you listen to her and you don't like us, if you mistrust us, she rings true. It causes more doubt. The reaction of the mom, the dad, the crazy aunt, all of this immediately discredits the United States, but not just outside here here at home as well, I believe. The assumptions are so cartoonish, they're so fake. It's role playing. Why would she lead to such bizarre, unsupported conclusions without any evidence at all? Why would she point the finger to America? Why would she say, I've never done anything? Because most people won't look it up. This is the tactic they use against Israel. We haven't had it used here in our own country. This is the first time. This is something new for America. This has moved us into a new place because what's different this time is we don't trust our own government. Back on September 11th, we would all stand together. But now we have an inherent distrust of the U.S. We have an inherent distrust of the media. We, we know we're not getting the truth. And remember, back after September 11th, the truthers didn't ring true to anybody. Because we would never have believed that before. The truthers are a mixed bag. It's Ahmadinejad, radical Muslims, and Michael Moore. And all that you have to do is plant the seeds of doubt whenever and wherever they can. With her and her husband's stories changing in such a strategic way, I can't help but wonder. Is somebody coaching her? I said this is a lot like Israel. Let me bring you up to speed on one other thing. One other thing I haven't seen anybody talk about. On the day of the bombings, everybody leapt to connect the bombings to the tax day and the tea party. Have you heard anybody point out that April 15th was also the 65th anniversary of Israel's independence? I mean, given the bombers were radical Islamists, hmm, is it reasonable to search for the connection there? Should we expect that the tactics of bombings and terror normally used against Israel to happen here more frequently? By the way, the White House cared about this 65th anniversary of Israel so much that they say, well, because of sequester, we had to cancel the dinner celebration for the Jewish Heritage Month at the White House. Yeah. Oh, and, and one other thing. Here's the bombing scene. And um, you notice that this is, this is the area here. And there's the Israeli flag. I mean, is it too much to, is it too much to assume that maybe... Has anybody looked for the Saudi on the surveillance tape from the day before? The scripts don't match. The media is not telling you the truth. The government is also not telling you the truth. And I, I have to tell you, I thought about it a lot this weekend. I thought, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe everybody else in the media has gotten the call saying, hey, look, you're, har you're harming the investigation. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all because they would have called us. 
somebody would have said to us. But instead, we have law enforcement officials calling us. We have people in the federal government who are instrumental in this case calling us saying, please don't give up on this. Please, please, please. The administration keeps downplaying the threat of al-Qaeda, downplaying its crazy talk to even say anything about Saudi Arabia. They say that al-Qaeda is decimated, but yet their activities seem to be ramping up. They say nothing is happening, could possibly happen with Saudi Arabia, and yet the Saudi Arabians, their fingerprints are all over this. We told you about the incidents in, in Canada and Spain. Now there's a story today about the terrorists beginning their spring offensive, something that we've been afraid of seeing happen here. It may just be getting started. This is something I've told you for years, that when we would really be weak, when our enemies felt, okay, I think they're done, they're at the weakest point, they'd say, go. Are we there? The way our government has gone out of their way to lend credibility to the secular and legitimate Muslim Brotherhood while denying any potency left in Al-Qaeda and other spin-off radical Islamic terror organizations, we have set ourselves up for big, big trouble. And I don't think anybody except the few in Washington and in our law enforcement agencies really care. The Muslim Brotherhood is not secular. And the only thing legitimate about them is the threat that they pose to you and your family. They have been exported around the world and they go to work radicalizing people. That's what they do. They are basically an extension of Saudi Arabia and the radicals there. The Muslim Brotherhood is financed by contributions from their members, and many of those members just happen to be in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. They fund many of these mosques. In fact, the mosque the bombers attended in Boston, the Islamic Society of Boston, the ISB, Islamic Society of Boston. They admitted to receiving millions of dollars from Saudi banks. It's run by the American Muslim Society, the MAS, which has been described by prosecutors as a North American arm of the Muslim Brotherhood. Extreme radical Yusuf um, al Qaradawi, former trustee at the Islamic Society of Boston. It was founded by an al-Qaeda fundraiser who's currently serving time in federal prison. And the current imam, who also spoke at the Islamic Society of Boston, said, quote, Grab onto the shovel, grab onto the gun, and grab onto the sword. The list goes on and on. And this is just one mosque, the one in Boston. There are many. America cannot continue to ignore the warning signs, but it is more than just an administration failing to recognize the warning signs. This administration is aiding and abetting. They are adding to the warning signs. Let me give you this warning sign. This is from a concerned Islamic leader. This guy is a good guy, speaking at the State Department in 1999. He said, quote, remember, 99, the most dangerous thing that is going on now in these mosques is the extremist ideology because they are very active. They took more than 80% of the mosques that have been established in the U.S. A danger might suddenly come that you are not looking for. We don't know when or where it's going to hit. Islamists call the mosques uh, Rabat. It means um, military fortress. They've basically set up the radical Islamic version of the mafia. The Brotherhood and Care and other legitimate organizations are then filled with the made guys. They're completely legitimate. Uh-huh. Really? I've seen the Sopranos. This is the Islamic version of the Sopranos. They sit around the table in the scheme while the Rabats have the, the mob enforcers carrying out their hits. And that's what those two kids were. We keep going out of our way to help Saudi Arabia in times when we really shouldn't be. Why is the question? Why are we helping the Muslim Brotherhood? There's a deal with Saudi Arabia, and I think we all know it. I mean, geez, President Bush, I think, actually kissed one of the princes on the lips. It was creepy. We outwardly claim to have a mutual enemy in Al-Qaeda. And we tell the Saudis, uh, and they tell us, hey, we're both against Al-Qaeda. But in reality, we should say our enemy is not only Al-Qaeda, which came from within you, but the Islamic radicals that believe that jihad is more than an internal struggle also come from you. Al-Qaeda believes this. The Muslim Brotherhood believes this. Hezbollah believes this. Much of Saudi Arabia believes this. And why are we helping them? 
We've helped them in Egypt. We've helped them in Syria. We're helping them now in Syria. It was Al-Qaeda who was blamed for Benghazi because we were running guns through Turkey into Syria for what? For the Muslim Brotherhood at the request of Saudi Arabia. We have helped fund the Arab Spring, the Muslim Brotherhood. I will tell you one thing that the press will not, nor will the administration or the terrorist mom, and this is the good part. I want you to know, while all of these questions are out here, I want you to know that I personally have seen patriotic Americans coming out of the woodwork in our government right now and coming out of the woodwork in law enforcement. They will not sit down. They are warning. They are begging for someone to listen. I don't know why the rest of the networks won't do it. I don't know why anybody else won't do it. But people are being threatened with jail time now for helping. But they're not going to sit down. And this is much bigger than you think and much bigger and different than you are being told. You keep asking questions and know that we here at The Blaze will continue to do the same.